We all know that Sony is a successful company. This Japanese tech giant is one of the biggest TV manufacturers in the world. They have the best selling gaming console on the market, top of the line photography and camera products, high quality headphones, speakers, audio equipment and many more. But I think nowadays people almost forget that Sony has one more major division in their company and it's called Sony Mobile Division. And yes, if you're not that much into smartphones, you might be surprised to know that they still exist in this market and they are still making new flagship models every year. No marketing, no promotions, fairly overpriced devices, outdated software UI, bang average cameras and less than 1% of the market share worldwide. In 2020, Sony sold just over 400,000 smartphones in total worldwide. Just for comparison, in the same time, Samsung sold 6 million units of the Galaxy A51 and that's just one model. Wow! So, more and more smartphone tech related sites started asking the same question. Is this finally the end of the Sony smartphone division? Hi guys, this is Smartphone Everything and today we're gonna talk about the downfall of Sony smartphone division. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the ring, I would really appreciate it. Let's go back to the early 2000s. In 2001, Sony revealed that they are going to team up with Ericsson to start making phones together and the new company was born, Sony Ericsson. Sales were going more up every year and everyone praised them for their music playback quality and camera capabilities. By the time of 2007, Smartphone Analytics reported that Sony Ericsson now owns 9% of the total smartphone market. They were at their peak and the future was looking bright for them. But I guess you know what else happened in the tech world in 2007. That's right, Apple released their first iPhone. It was years ahead of the competition and everyone was sure that it's the right direction for the future of smartphones. Well. Not everyone. Now I can't say I blame Sony for anything. When the first iPhone came out, every other smartphone company was shocked with how futuristic it looked and with the whole fluid touchscreen experience. Next year, in 2008, Android system was officially launched and from then on till today, iOS vs Android topic is still going strong. Things were starting to change and most of the smartphone companies started using Android operating system in the next 2-3 years, including Sony. In 2011, Sony acquired Ericsson and changed their division name to Sony Mobile. They started using Android operating system and everything was going well. They reached their peak in 2013 and they hoped to carry that result into 2014. And here we are, beginning of the end for the Sony Mobile division. Complete downfall. So, after the excellent 2013, Sony was hoping to join Apple and Samsung in the fight to the top, but some ultimately bad decisions cost them everything. Sony wanted to be a top of the line flagship in the Android world, as they are a high quality premium company and they wanted their phones to be the same. But Android space was way too crowded, even back then, and because Android users had so many options to choose, Sony's strategy of being the most expensive and premium smartphone never lived up to expectations. Price was way too high for what they offered, basic blend design options, already outdated software features and UI and less generation processor. And yeah, there was this one thing that a lot of people didn't quite understand back then. They started shipping their flagship Xperia models every 6 months. So when every other manufacturer released their flagship device once a year, Sony was trying to push them to come out every 6 months. And most of the time the differences were so small that you couldn't understand what you were getting with this new device. When you combine that over-aggressive marketing with sky-high prices and almost always with the same design and software, people just stopped caring about Sony. Because in 2014, you had better and cheaper Android phones wherever you looked. HTC One M8, Samsung Galaxy S5, LG G3, Moto X, OnePlus One, Google Nexus 6 and plenty more. Now I'm not saying Xperia Z3 that came out that year was a bad phone. It was a very good phone and had most of the features like anyone else. But the absurdly big price and the fact that 6 months prior to Z3, Sony released a Z2, almost identical phone with almost identical specs. I mean, what? It started to look like Sony was trying to make as many phones as possible every few months. And of course, that's never a good idea. Their global marketing strategy was also not the best. And that is one of the main problems for this division till this day. They never knew how to put their phones in front of the people. Samsung for example is destroying almost everyone out there with their market strategy and they don't plan on stopping anytime soon. But okay, after that Sony realized they have to change their smartphone strategy and offer something different. And they changed their design, upgraded their software and lowered their price. Just kidding, of course they didn't do any of that. Fast forward to 2018 and they're still doing the same thing over and over again. 
late with all the major flagship features and specs, average camera, boring outdated design and of course $1000 price. I mean, at that point it wasn't even funny anymore, Sony sold around 7 million units of their smartphones in total in 2018, and let this sink in for a minute so you can see how far Sony fell off from the top. In 2018, Samsung sold roughly 300 million units worldwide. No, it's not a typo and you didn't hear wrong. Sony sold around 7 million units and at the same time Samsung sold around 300 million units. Wow. Middle East, India, Australia and many other major markets were cut off in 2019. Sony's new strategy was to focus on the four major markets, Japan, Europe, Taiwan and Hong Kong. Sony Mobile's Vice President of Marketing, Don Mesa, said in 2019 interview that their smartphone business is undergoing a lot of change and that every component of their business has been touched. After that, they released Sony Xperia 1 and Xperia 10 and 10 Plus, but once again, they had almost no marketing and they just didn't sell well. Don't make a mistake, Xperia 1 was a good phone, even more than good, but it seemed like people just didn't care about Sony anymore. There was close to zero hype for this phone and this was the model they expected could make a difference, but sadly, Xperia 1 made no impact on the market. They reportedly sold around 3 to 5 million phones in 2019, and just so you can see how small of a number that is, Huawei sold more phones daily than Sony did in the whole quarter. It's just shocking how far they fell off at this point. And then, here we are in 2020, and it's starting to get really serious. With the whole COVID-19 situation and the financial crisis around the globe, it surely didn't help Sony in any way. And believe it or not, but the latest reports are saying that in 2020, at the moment, Sony sold around 400,000 smartphones worldwide. Sony smartphone sales are declining at such a fast pace that the only question we have right now is, will they survive 2020? Things have never been this bad and it seems like the question is not if, but when will they finally shut it down. But Sony is just refusing to shut it down. At this point, it seems like they're just too proud to close their mobile division because they were once a force to be reckoned with in this same division and they feel that they should be included in every tech aspect there is, even if it means that they are doing negative numbers year after year. Because let's be honest, Sony is not gonna fall apart if they shut down their mobile department. They are doing great in so many other sectors and they have so many other products which are actually selling great that they really don't need this whole smartphone situation. But like I said, they seem to have too much pride to call it a day and I think even they don't have a clear plan or idea for the next year, but one thing is sure, this current model isn't sustainable in any way. Thank you for watching guys, this was my longest and most detailed video I've done yet. I would really really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you like this type of stories about smartphones, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you have some other topic you would like me to do, just tell me in the comments. Hope you enjoyed, peace.